Okay, yeah. So welcome back. And uh, so let's a quick recap. What all have we learned up until now? Marriage is a good thing. Yes, it's designed by God. It's an institution to be honored. Yes. It should be one man, one woman. It's a covenant. Okay, apart from the main headings, what all did we learn? It's an institution to be honored. Other than the main headings that you can read quickly on your book, what else did we learn? Marriage is holy. Okay. God solemnized the first marriage. Very good. Be faithful. Okay. Anything else? Okay, healthy separation. Very good. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to look at the next one, which marriage is a union of two. Marriage is a union of two. So that let's look at uh, uh, the second scripture. We've read the first one. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 31 to 32. Let's read that. Can somebody read that? Ephesians chapter 5, 31 and 32. As the scripture says, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and united with his wife, and the two will become one. There is a deep secret truth revealed in this scripture, which I understand as applying to Christ and the church. Okay, thank you, um, Komal. Now, what what is the... Um, uh, who is the husband and the wife compared to here? Christ and the church. And so what we do mean when we say one flesh is to be united one with another. Okay? That's what when we're, when we're talking about. They are so united that it's almost like that they are one person. And the, the, the analogy that is given here is to be like how Christ is to the church. So give me some understanding about how is Christ and the church together? How should the Christ and the church to be? Okay, so Christ gave himself up for the church because of his love for the church, right? So in order to do what? So that they would establish that one relationship with him again. Isn't it? Because what happens when sin comes in, there's a separation. And so we are separated by sin uh, uh, with God. We are separated because of our sin. And what does Christ do? He brings us back so that we are in one in union with God. Okay? All right. So what else do you see about Christ in the church? The church honors Christ as the head so much so that we, as scripture says, we walk as he walked. We live our life like he, we, he lives. So whatever we do, we want to honor him. Right? And that's, uh, uh, that's one more thing. Okay, anything else? So you see that the Christ and the church, there is that unity. The perfect unity between Christ and church that comes about. And that's the same unity that we are called in marriage with our spouse. That one spirit, one body, one mind. All together being united in that one person. Okay? So, um, when we're looking at um, the word or to become one, there are some key words that describe this becoming one. Okay? And I'm on page 5 and we can just look through that. So, one is the relationship that you share with one another. That relationship should be mutual. What does mutual mean? What does the word mutual mean? Both, right? One to the other person and the other person back to one. So you love together, you respect one another, you show understanding, you show comfort, you show uh, joy. All of that is one to another. A relationship means that, the, that it is mutual. Okay? 
are we all here or you will gone off after the break to nearby coffee shop come back come back everyone come back all right okay the next is companionship what does companionship mean that is a togetherness that you have with someone else would you like to maybe some people do but generally do you like to go out um maybe to to see a place on your own or would you rather like to have some company you like to have some company i know some people like to go out and alone and that's okay right so the com a companionship is someone to share life with right someone someone to uh, care about someone to bring about the joys of life that's what companionship is okay so becoming one is a relationship it's a companionship it's an agreement what's an agreement that you have the same ideas or the same opinions or the same points of view now does that mean if you don't have same ideas or same points of view you can't become one let me ask uh, komal and uh, akil how many times do you all do you and your wives always agree with one another okay okay all right uh. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So so my question is all because we disagree does that mean we cannot become one? You are going to disagree. Right? Because we are different people. Right? So I may say this phone is the best phone and all of you say what kachada phone this is right and we we may we may disagree but how do we become one is saying okay i know huh yeah so i say yeah correct you see this as kachada but this is very good for me right now right but what i'm what i'm trying to say is that you can have difference of opinions but you can come to a place of willing to walk together in agreement saying maybe in some things yeah it's okay that you see it like this and i see it like that but that doesn't have to divide us okay so that is also a sense of agreement where we say okay i see i see this is as red and you say this is blue i said okay i i know that you have eyes that look like blue and eyes that i have eyes that look like red but nevertheless we can agree together that we see differently right that's also as part of agreement next one is complimenting complimenting what is complimenting do ah huh? sorry it builds each other up complimenting is where okay so so this is this is a different compliment so there are i think what you're saying is the other compliment this complimenting is i am not able to do something uh yes someone else pitches in for me right like for example i'm trying to give an example at my own home okay so in sometimes in some difficult stressful situations i think very quickly i think very very fast so much so that i come up with maybe five ideas whereas my husband takes his time thinks about it carefully gives it a little time and only then may decide so i believe we complement each other because both of us are not you know doing things on the uh, on the word go and neither are both of us you know laid back it is a good balance between two people that's what complementing means okay having that good balance where you're able to fit together it's perfectly fitting together right you know the lock in what the lock in key um if you want to fit two puzzle pieces together they can't be the same shape no one has to be a little different from the other only then will they fit so it's that fitting together good enough is what we call as complement next is unity unity is where sometimes our differences can become a reason for coming together closely so that we are doing things together using the strength of togetherness to do things the unity where we come together to do something 
So I may have a certain strength, my spouse may have another strength, but we come together in unity to finish a certain task. That's what becoming one also means. Okay? And the last one is intimacy. Intimacy or closeness is where there you are in a place where you can openly share and openly be and be honest and vulnerable with one another. That also builds oneness. Okay? You know what the word vulnerability means? That is, sorry? Feeble. Okay. So vulnerable means that I can share something without feeling, share something with, with my spouse without feeling that they are going to judge me or I'm sharing something that's very, very personal to me that I may not share to everyone outside, but I will share something like that only to someone who I trust. So I become weak to show my weakness. That's what vulnerable means. right? And when you do that, it builds intimacy, it builds understanding, it builds closeness. Okay? All right? Okay, so to become one is actually to be in a place of agreement. Now, when you are becoming one, it does not mean that... So very often, you know, uh, I've heard that people find people uh, don't want to get married is because they feel that their identity will be lost. What I am, who I am, what I will do is all lost. But becoming one does not, you don't have to lose your individual identity or the kind of person that you are. But you are actually complementing with the other person. You are bringing your difference, they are bringing their difference, and it comes together beautifully to become one. Okay? So, yeah. So are we there together? Okay. Another part of oneness is how we spiritually, what spirit what spiritual levels we are in what does the bible say about um about togetherness let's read 2 corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 18 can someone read that second corinthians 6 14 to 18 do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness and what Accord has Christ with Belial, or what part has believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of living God, as he as God say, has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them. And he and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Okay, so another part of oneness is being equally, equally yoked. What does that mean? That is a believer being yoked with an unbeliever. So, you know where the word yoke comes from? Have you seen in the farmer and what does the farmer do? He puts two bulls together and he puts one, that's called the yoke. What does that yoke do? Very good. It helps them to stay together, right? Now, suppose you were to yoke a bull and a dog. We can do that? You understood what I said? If you are able to yoke a bull and a dog, or let's say a bull and a cat, or whatever, what will happen? Huh? The cat will... Will you, will you get your purposes done? You won't be able to till your land. You won't be able to farm your land, right? There's one bull that's going to carry the whole load of that yoke. The cat is not doing anything. So do you see that what happens when a believer and an unbeliever are yoked together? Sorry? 
the pressure okay the pressure will be on one person in very many ways right so when and that's why scripture says do not be unequally yoked which means marry someone who is at the same spiritual who is a believer like you who is in this in the spiritual maturity that you are in right or the spiritual calling that you are in because if not it will be like the bull and the cat trying to till a land okay so that also is part of the oneness that we are talking about okay because there are going to be a lot of differences between a believer and an unbeliever once they live in together how they worship how they pray um how they bring up children what are the kind of things they will have in their house what are the activities they will be involved in all of this becomes a regular daily challenge when you yoke yourself with someone who's not a believer okay yeah so good okay all right there's a question ma'am in marriage can we share everything to our spouse komal can you she's he's asking can we share everything to our spouse okay in the in the online how many people are married there are quite a few people married there right so would some of you like to answer that question yeah daniel you're married yourself go go ahead yeah daniel okay go uh, godino would you want to answer can the question was can i share everything with yes you share it yes everything? i will answer i'm married for 51 years wow i'm a grandmother of four children oh wonderful <laughs> lovely yes. okay and yes. uh, i want to say yes you can share because that's what you build intimacy with your spouse and you trust him that he will not let you down okay lovely yeah. thank you so much ma'am yeah so I, <laughs> yeah i would yes. also like to add go kofi yes uh you have to share because god created man and woman and they were all naked nothing was hidden from each other so you mm. have to share mm. thank you nice nice perspective yes okay daniel you just married for 3 months okay uh, yeah maybe that's why he wants to know so i think you've got enough answers from um from all all the students here who's helped you understand it's best and it's good to share because it builds intimacy okay nice nice all right okay um we'll move on to the last point and then we will keep it open for some questions and last one marriage is a journey of love till death do us part um so what what is matthew 1916 the latter half say what god has jo joined together let man not separate so marriage is meant till death do you part it's for a lifetime and until death calls either one of us we choose to be in marriage because that's the vow and the covenant you make right that till death do you part till death do us part we will be together so that is the way that god has designed marriage that nothing should separate man and woman until god calls one of them okay all right wonderful we have lots of time for questions now So the question time is opened for both the online students as well as the my students here. Yes, Komal, go ahead. Uh, if a man and woman is living uh, without a marriage uh, from ten years, fifteen years, so it's it is good to uh, compulsory to have marriage means means they have to do marriage or what my the marriage. Bible. Okay. Uh, what the Bible says about this. So the question is, if a man and woman have been in a live-in relationship for over ten years, is it necessary for marriage? Okay. If they're living together. Okay. So, what are when we're looking at 
marriage and we see that god bought man and woman together right and like we said he solemnized the first wedding in now in from you know now or you know uh, even even ages past how do we solemnize a wedding how do we solemnize a wedding yeah so a man a woman comes together with the minister of god in front of god and solemnizes it okay and it's also in the witness of people right so any covenant should be made how how is a covenant made in the witness of one or two right with god being at the center so even as you as we see it as a church marriage with i think it has a deeper meaning in it that we are making a covenant before god with the witness of others and that's what brings two people together right but what happens in live in relationships there's no witness there's no uh maybe there is a commitment that's made between two people but that's not something that honors god because it it is within the covenant of marriage within maybe through a vow or, and that's a representation you know when we say our vows it's it's a way of doing it within that it's still a sexually immoral relationship a live in relationship is a sexually immoral relationship right so when you are in a covenant you coming together with a in a covenant before god before other witnesses that's what makes that marriage and anything outside of that is not a marriage so this couple you're talking about it's best that they get into a covenant relationship it's also it helps if we look at other practical acts aspects it's legally binding i right? suppose this man decides he wants to go away it's not legally binding isn't it and so there's nothing that keeps them together because there isn't a legal uh, construct that's there right and that's also instituted by the land or by our country or the place you're living in for your safety for your protection what do you think it is anything outside it says no honor your marriage so a marriage is a covenant that is made with two people with with a covenant made before god and with in two minutes that is the covenant and so anything outside of that is a yeah so they they can do court marriage court marriage is for christian yes. um okay that is a legal binding the legal aspect is taken care of uh, have they done it in vows they haven't right so it's not it's not something that's done so legally it is yes maybe accepted but again it's it's uh, is that a covenant but yeah you can you can come again and call a minister or you know uh, between yourselves go to god and do that if you are having a legal marriage and there is there is some kind of a construct to it otherwise there isn't a construct at all okay. i think someone else has asked a question here one minute there's a question on the chat and then i'll take your question okay diksha is there any possibility in marriage not to have arguments or fights between spouse till death do a part okay all the married people give answers she's asked is there a possibility not to have arguments till you die no it is possible okay okay hmm it is possible so she said have any arguments or fights that is you don't even argue at all i don't think it's going to a fight level she's just saying i don't like this dosa how dare you say even that shouldn't happen <laughs> okay so everyone says no no way not possible yeah <laughs> okay so i think uh, the yes say nelson nelson give okay, come on nelson tell tell, tell. <laughs> tell, tell. <laughs> it's possible 
Huh? It's possible. It's possible. How? If the husband is deaf and dumb. <laughs> okay <laughs> so so think diksha you should remember that when two people are getting into marriage you're coming from uh different yeah everything is different my experience my upbringing my personality my even my spiritual level of faith everything is different so when two people are coming from two different experiences and two different world together there is bound to be conflicts conflicts are not bad conflicts are normal the only thing that you need to look at is how do we resolve those arguments and fights that's what is most needed it's a skill that you need to have okay next question okay uh, yes daniel oliver you had a question Daniel please unmute yourself Okay all right Okay anyone else has any other questions Come come ask Take the mic and we can ask Hello Yes yes go ahead Sister, how can we help our children in getting married if they are having the ideas that they may lose their identity, they may be submissive? How do we help them to overcome this type of issue? Thank you, Lucy. So I think one of the um, one of the reasons why, especially a lot of young people don't want to get married, is because of the misinformation. One, secondly, because of the kind of examples they see around. marriages are meant to be um a place where there is peace where there is willingness to see the differences and the and the um uh, you know the 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 contextual issues which may be different for two people it's seeing that and being willing to work through it but i think many people don't see good examples of marriage and so they feel that you know i lose my identity or... sorry lucy okay so i think th that's could be some of the reasons and for us to one have good marriages not just in the church but even in our own homes so if i want to show my children that marriage is a good thing i have to put in enough effort an intention to make my own marriage uh better or work or at least in a way that helps them see that you know it is something that you do with intention also helping them learn god's word that being submissive as a wife again is a very misinformed thing but what does that submission mean we will look at it in chapter 4 that's there's a whole lot of whole chapter on that we will discuss that but to help them understand what god's word says about the roles and the responsibilities that are there for a man or for a woman okay all right warren warren james i think you have uh, yes uh, i just wanted to so uh, basically i was just talking about uh, say for example someone gets into a a relationship into into marriage and uh, and of course they find out later that uh, they're not compatible but it doesn't just end there it is like for example i know situations where uh there are you know some one of the persons one of the partners is more domineering and and then it leads to uh mental bullying domestic violence and that sort of thing so you know and it's mainly perpetrated by one person maybe the 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 wife or the husband you know it's in, 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 i know cases of both sides and it's not always physical it could be mental mental bullying uh and uh, yeah it has it has a very it has an adverse effect on the person's mental health and 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 they still are in that communion because of because you know it's it's a commitment 
but at the same time they're not living the life they should be living they're not they're not happy they're depressed and 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 that could lead to things like suicide and stuff like that so how do you is it how 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 do you deal with a situation like that okay thank you warren that's a real real life situation real life difficulties so when you do see uh, uh, again uh, you use the word incompatible um, but i think what i want to use here is there are specific challenges in the way maybe in the personality of one person that really or both or the dynamics of both that causes um, marital issues so whenever there are marital issues i especially to this degree that you are saying when it can't be discussed or can't be sorted out between a husband and a wife that's the time it's important to get support and get help um now having said that if a marriage has significant symptoms of violence um let's say aggression abuse it's important to address that immediately um and i would say you know especially when there is forms of abuse so much so that there is even a threat to one's life um they should seek external support and maybe for a point of time stay separate till they are able to come uh, not stay separate i say get, the person who is abused should be should get to a place of safety till they can get help before they come back together so the I, I, and i think a lot of times we are misinformed that even when there is so much of violence or so much of abuse that's taking place to stick on in the marriage and face the abuse and face the uh, you know torture or the physical uh, hardship or the sexual assault that may be happening even in marriage uh it's important to get the other person to safety and then seek support so that they can come together to discuss to find ways of dealing with the matter and that's that is important to to bring them to a place of understanding and reconciliation and if need be uh getting any kind of medical uh psychiatric support depending on what the the person may be going through uh so in situations where there is violence abuse uh significant assault trauma it's important to ensure the safety of both the people get counseling support before they can live together and start journeying on together so yeah um i know but that's a whole lot to speak of but we can discuss that in further length as we're going to we'll be looking at a chapter called as challenges overcoming challenges and we will look at that do you have a follow up question warren no not for now thanks okay all right yes someone had a question here okay kofi you yes, have sister. yes go ahead um, uh in our part of africa i mean africa one thing that is going on I'm, in respect to the legalities of marriage people always most people want to travel abroad for greener pastures and some will go in to the registrar general to marry to get married to somebody the person may even have a genuine wife in Ghana or in Africa wherever the person is but because he or she wants to travel abroad uk or germany or somewhere they would then go and have a fictitious marriage certificate mm. so these kind of legalities in marriage how is it like sorry what is your question uh, how do these so, 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 things in marriage the, the 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 question is is it that uh in such cases the one who is getting married or papers just to travel outside his country for greener pastures mm. meanwhile the person may have a husband or a wife mm. is it going to be an adultery or are we going to look at it or 
how are we going to situate it such situation okay i think god's word is absolutely clear that marriage is between one man one woman only no matter what other intentions or agendas a person may have uh to marry somebody in another country because they could travel to that that place or not in the sight of god marriage is god has instituted marriage between a man and a woman one man one woman and anything outside of that is definitely banking on your own resources like for this for, for this example that you gave banking on their own ideas or their own knowledge um to to maybe travel so he says i can only travel if i have a wife there so we bank on that support or that resource to help us rather than actually looking to god to open up ways to travel so i think scripture is very clear no matter what your intentions or agenda is one man one woman is god's principle yeah kofi i th- hope i answered your question yes please okay so another question is within the marriage what if the husband is having an illegal relationship and not doing his responsibility what does the what should the wife do how to counsel such families okay i i think this is fairly simple if there is someone having an adulterous relationship we know that they have to cut off from that and begin to renew this relationship with their wife now although i'm saying it like this sometimes it's not as easy because what if the husband refuses to accept that he's in an illegal relationship or what if he refuses to come out of the relationship it becomes a whole lot of hardship for the wife and to counsel these families can take time um you know can take a lot of wisdom but the answer is clear we know what we want as the outcome the outcome is to have the husband come back to his wife and start building their marriage that's the answer but how to counsel it how to counsel them really requires the cooperation the will the willingness to change in all members in that relationship okay daniel your question was when my wife tells something to me i listen to her but when i tell her some when i tell something to her she doesn't give a year how can i solve this problem <laughs> okay all right daniel okay you're just 3 months married okay <laughs> so unfortunately all my students here most of them are not married only two people are married okay so how do you resolve a problem when your wife doesn't listen to you uh, let me ask all the people in the online you all have answers for daniel now no one wants to answer no students i i think okay. daniel you can have a look at the way you approach her with your issues because sometimes the way maybe your approach may not be so nice to her so you can also consider that and i think it will help <laughs> you said it so nicely kofi thank you <laughs> okay angeline says find out what she's interested in okay nice okay daniel says i will approach it correctly all right other married people come on i know in the group there are much more married people come on Sandra, looking out for a good time to pre- present ourselves and present our ideas what it meant for something good hmm. <laughs> okay <laughs> all right thank you so lu uh, uh, godino says talk into her ears maybe she will listen more <laughs> all right <laughs> okay anything else 
Anybody else who's married? Yes, Sam, go ahead. We're waiting to hear you. <laughs> uh i think uh, yeah i just resonate with uh you know i think it is angel in right find out what she is interested in maybe sometimes she doesn't have the bandwidth to listen to you all the time but if she's not listening to you at all yeah that can that's a deeper issue uh yeah that that's just something that i wanted to share okay not listening to you oh, at all not... okay I'll so, leave that to Auntie G. <laughs> so Daniel, you know what? You should go to your wife and say, and you say, darling, my sweetheart, my honey, you know, I feel, I feel left out when you don't listen to me. I feel really sad when you don't listen to me. I really want to talk to you and have you talk to me back. So would you please hear me talk for some time and see if that works? And you're bringing it to her, sugar coated with honey and darling and sweetheart, rather than how dare you don't listen to me. Um, she doesn't want to listen to any compliments, also. Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, so, uh, Daniel, we are all giving you, you know, two piece advices without really knowing your situation. So, please forgive us if we're not really helping you. But we're, we're all doing this out of, you know, what is working for us. But nevertheless, I think, Daniel, I want to say, if you're having struggles, it may be a good thing to actually talk to someone and share what you're going through, maybe like a counselor to get help that will really support you. Okay. So the other people are saying, uh, give her a hug and try to communicate. All right. Maybe if she's not listening to any compliments, uh, uh, maybe something like, sending her a love note or maybe giving her some chocolates, some flowers, giving her a candlelight dinner, telling her how beautiful she looks, maybe something like that could work. Like I said, I'm just saying all of this at the top of my head without even really knowing what your issue is. Um, but, you know, if you can really talk to somebody, if you're really struggling, please do that and share it with a counselor who can actually help you in your situation, okay? We're just throwing answers from here and there. OK. Um, Miriam, you have a question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping you. Uh, actually, I wanted to say that, uh, you know, the Bible says uh, a woman is weak of this. So sometimes also it depends on the approach how a man approaches a woman or maybe when you're telling her something which words do you use how are you telling her communication how are you bringing it to her so sometimes when you start with harsh words i think it makes the heart of a woman to to actually have that fear you find the argument comes in so i really don't know what the problem is with her brother and uh, I, well, I'm not also married, but uh, I love things actually, studying things about marriage. Uh, yeah, so that is it. Approach matters. How you bring out your words matters a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Thanks. Yes. All right. I hope some of this helps you, Daniel. If not, like I said, please approach someone to share. Warren, do you have any other questions? Yes, I'm, uh, my, mine is not a, a, a solution for Daniel. It's something separate. Hmm. Uh, basically, uh, it's just that I mean, it, through my in my experience, I've I've not uh, I come across a lot of couples, <laughs> and one particular couple that I know, uh, they I mean they got married, but they were like not equally yoked. So one of the partners is uh, a believer; the other one uh, used to be, but not anymore. They've gone away from the church, uh, and uh, of course they've separated now, but they're not officially divorced. Uh, uh, so one of the partners, one of the, uh, has uh, no intention of getting the, uh, you know, getting back together. They tried counseling uh, with the church leaders, uh, elders, and uh, it hasn't worked. And uh, the other, the other partner is very 
uh, you know, very much with Christ and, and you know, and clinging to Christ and has accepted what whatever is going on. Now, uh, my question is: in this situation, if one of them goes away and uh, uh, you know they've tried, I mean, they've they've tried to reconcile, but there's no, they've reached the point of no reconciliation. Is divorce acceptable in this case? Hmm. So um, when we look at uh, scripture, uh, Warren, um, something that um, it talks about, and I think we can read this in, um, one minute, just give me, I'm just trying to get the scripture. Okay, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses uh, 12 onwards, okay? It says, um, if a Christian man has a wife who is an unbeliever and she agrees to go on living with him, he must not divorce her. And if a Christian woman is married to a man who is an unbeliever and he agrees to go on living with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband uh, is made acceptable to God by being united to his wife and the unbelieving wife is made acceptable to God by being united to a Christian husband. If this were not so, their children would be like pagan children, but as it is, they are acceptable to God. Verse 15, however, if the one who is not a believer wishes to leave the Christian partner, let it be so. In such cases, the Christian partner, whether husband or wife, is free to act. God has called you to live in peace. Does that answer your question, Warren? That's fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it makes sense. But just, just to... Uh... Uh, reiterate my point. For me, I I always believe that you know uh, that the when I was growing up, I was a marriages are made in heaven, and I believe in that, and I believe that exactly what 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 Scripture says. You know what God has made, what God has joined, let man not separate. And for me, no matter how dire the situation may may look, I still believe that through prayer things can get better. I've never I'm not given up hope on them, and I will not. And this is something I will carry on praying and carry on uh, hoping for. And I know at some point God will make them reconcile. God will bring them together. That's my right. prayer. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, so I, there are couples that um, that I've come across who are in the same situation where the unbelieving spouse wants to leave, whereas the believing spouse has refused a divorce and has continued to just keep, keep on praying, uh, believing in the promises of God, Till they're able to see um, uh, that reconciliation. So yes, it depends. I think um, many people take it differently. There are some who have decided to call it a divorce, but some who stick on. And uh, nevertheless, whatever decisions people make, we do not see them in judgment, but continue to uphold and support them through their decisions. All right, are we last question? Ma'am, would you want me to split the place? Sorry, Miriam, didn't hear that. The scripture that you are reading. Miriam, your connection seems a little patchy, so we cannot hear you completely. If you can type it, please, that will be helpful. Yes, sir. Okay. When we actually look at pastors and the lives that they live, and when they have a blessed marriage, it's they have a, a blessed marriage okay. and, uh, you know, happy family. And, you know, the congregation also looks forward and, you know, to reach out and are blessed as well. But when there are people in the ministry who have gone through a broken marriage, okay, for whatever reason and, uh, you know, uh, uh, struggle, God can still use them in Absolutely. the ministry? Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely, he can use them. And it will not hinder the ministry? What did you say? Uh, someone who has gone through a separation okay. for whatever reason. And right. uh, God has called him either before that or after that in whatever scenario. Right. So uh, it will not hinder, it will God's, not hinder the that, ministry. That what you said? So if, if God's the one who's calling you in towards ministry and you have a heart that is right with God, God can use any of your situations to bring glory to him. I, there is an example. I don't know if you've heard about Catherine Kuhlman. Yeah, so Catherine Kuhlman was a woman who got married, but then later had 
you know separated due to whatever reasons that were there you saw her you have you seen you know see her ministry so powerful so what god you know god restores us in ways that maybe we cannot imagine but he will work all of this for his good right so we may not we may limit ourselves because of maybe the wrong decisions we make or wrong decisions other people make but god can change that for us for his good and for his glory because on the flip side what's just back of my mind is is that you know uh, just trying to think over it like you know because i'm into the ministry trying to hold on to something which is like really like almost like gone mm. so is that a real reason to just hold on to that marriage or is it just better off that you know it's really not working you've tried your best you've reached out to counselors you've reached out to pastors you've tried your heart out and it's been a long phase and then it's a time to really decide when you really need to move on mm. but on the parallel flip side you're also there and to just entering the you know phase of ministry and thing so, so I, huh. that is i mean if you're talking about a person like this who who's really seeking god you know uh i would encourage that person to really have that peace from god on what their next step is because some people continue on in maybe that broken marriage or separated and continue on with ministry because they feel that there is hope there will be restoration once but in other in other times there are other scenarios people may have the conviction that they need to move on and you know depending on their situation and that i think is a personal decision that they need to have themselves okay all right i think we'll close thank you so much i'm so glad that the first session went off with a bang we'll wait for the next one let's quickly just pray and we'll close heavenly father we just thank you for your word thank you lord that um, your word continues to be a light for our lives in every situation in every uh, event in every season of our lives god we know that your word will see us through heavenly father i just pray for each one of us on this uh, in this class and those students who will be watching this later father we bring before you our relationships our marriage our marriages a lot whatever situation we may be in father we know that you will work all things for your glory we submit our uh, our lives and we pray that we will walk in accordance to your purposes and in your will thank you i pray your blessing over each student in jesus name we pray amen god bless thank you all meet you next week thank you sister thank you thank you